call this Freeburg Community High School District 77 Board of Education meeting to order. If you leave, please call roll. Doug Parrish? Here. Dean Gauck? Here. Victoria Staub? Here. Mike Reynolds? On the phone. Dennis Hoff? Here. Gary Henning? Angie Miller? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Agenda changes this evening. We do. Do we have any public comments this evening? Seeing none, we all had a chance to review the consent agenda this evening. Do we have any additions or comments or subtractions? None. Do we have any committee reports? Uh, we had a finance committee meeting. Oh, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We need to approve that. Sorry. Yep. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Sorry. First and second. Ness, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Sorry about that. Committee meet, committee reports. Uh, we had a finance committee meeting um, on the 9th of this month. Uh, talked about the bond, reviewed the bonds. Um, just basically came out of the meeting that we're going to move forward with the working cash bond sale and then uh, keep an eye on uh, the market and see how that goes for the 2011 refinance. Okay. Is that option two? Uh, just yes. sure. okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. We're gonna bypass the student members report this evening, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, principal's report. I actually, they, there is no report. For okay, me. then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. All right. Um, Couple things. Um, obviously, the uh, coronavirus has affected the school quite a bit. Um, the uh, governor uh, ordered a two-week uh, uh, quarantine from schools. So the we've kind of run through scenarios. Um, the office staff is working. Um, just kind of a skeleton staff. We're, we're switching back and forth between which uh, uh, person works. Um, janitors are, are doing the same kind of thing. We are setting up lunches beginning next week. Um, we've had um, small group people call in and ask for lunches. So OPA is going to come in and we're going to meet with them tomorrow. We're going to get that set up. We've got volunteers, teachers, and some aides to volunteer to come in next week to do that. Um, we are going to send lessons out to students next week. Um, those that can't get lessons have been asked to call into school. We'll set up um, hard copies for them and get that out to those. Uh, but we're just trying to make it through. Janitors did, have done a great job cleaning the school, extra clean. Uh, I want to commend the office staff for the job they've done. So, um, And we're just waiting to see what the governor tells us next. Are we going to come back on the 31st or if we have to go a little longer? Okay, any questions? No. <coughs> um, would this be a good place to ask a question concerning sure. the lunches? Yeah. Uh, where was that mandated, or was that uh, out of our? It's it's completely voluntary to do it. All right. Um, but the state is um, all the lunches are reimbursable, and all the transportation is reimbursable. So okay. the district should not be out incur of any a cost. Funds. I was just I, I didn't know if it was just for the free and reduced lunch uh, people if that was mandated. Actually, it's for anybody 18 years of age and under. So if they would come up, if we, because we've got four spots, we're putting um, a vehicle with lunches. If, if somebody comes up that's 18 or under, then we've been told we should give them lunch. So, and we'll keep track and we'll submit that to the state. Okay, thanks. Okay. I, would, I, would, I just want to say I'm glad we got that set up. I think that's a great idea. And the fact that we've set up some extra stations besides the school, I think is wonderful. So thank you for getting that organized. Uh, school calendar, um, all these days are, act, are considered act of God days, which are days that uh, do not have to be made up. And because we are on spring break this week, uh, Monday was not part of the act of God, but it is part of our spring break. So right now we are set to have the last day for kids on May 27th, I'm sorry, May, uh, Tuesday, May 26th, and the last day for teachers as Wednesday, May 27th. Uh, and as, as of right now, uh, graduation is still set. Um, for that Sunday, the Sunday prior, I believe it was the 17th. Any questions? Um, okay, next item. Um, 
obviously, uh, with all the, the corona uh, issues, the state legislation's focus has been on that. Uh, but I do think there's going to be some more uh, work with legislation that will affect the schools, uh, particularly the graduated income tax. Um, I did include in your packet a copy of about two pages worth of bills that are working. To, I'm sorry, they're in your board packet. They're not in your folder right now. Uh, but those are things that obviously every year something comes up and so if they become law then we'll address it. But the graduated income tax is the biggest because basically he is balancing the passage of that of funding, fully funding the evidence-based funding model. Any questions or comments on that? Next item. Uh, the, we did receive notification that we are going to get the school maintenance grant, which is very nice. It's uh, up to $50,000. Uh, that will go towards the uh, tile abatement in the Central Hall. Uh, so that uh, uh, was a very nice little piece of news this past week. Questions or comments on that? Is that and that's a matching grant, right? Yes. Okay, and we just know up to, we don't know the exact amount yet. Well, we, we should get the full amount because we're going to be well over $100,000 for the project. Okay. I didn't know if it was lead-based or... up to 50000 Okay. And then there's some talk that it could go down to forty six, So it'll be somewhere forty five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 that we'll get. And then what they'll do is they'll just send us a check. Okay. So we should be getting a check sometime. We then have to report on the progress of that um, project. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Next item. Um, had the Ag Center open house, uh, had a nice turnout for that. That's worked out very well. Um, I wish we were in there next week, but um, um, we're gonna keep moving forward and uh, working on the shop now. But otherwise, it was a nice turnout, and thank you those that uh, came out to take a look at it. I thought it went really, really well. It really looks good. Have you all, have you all been in there? Yeah. In fact, with, with the awards that they put up and mm -hmm. just, Really look sharp. Mm -hmm. Really could feel like a good home place for our, mm -hmm. you know, for our ag. Okay. Any other questions or comments on that? Let's move on to old business. Uh, we need to conduct a hearing uh, for the intent of the Board of Education to sell three million five hundred eighty-six thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars worth of working cash bond funds. This is the binding hearing. Uh, this is the next step in our process to do the working cash bond sale. Okay. We need a motion. So moved. Second. So we have, we have a motion to adjourn the regular Board of Education meeting and convene to a public hearing concerning the intent of the Board of Education to sell $3,586,787 in working cash funds. Uh, we'll start with you, Angie. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, so we're now in our <coughs> public hearing. Do we have any comments? I would like to make some comments at this okay. time. Just because someone uh, voiced some concerns to me um, and asked that we not do the sale because they're concerned about property with the coronavirus stuff, worried about property values falling and then us not being able to cover that. So I told the person I would bring it up at this meeting so that it was covered. So um, just, I only was contacted by one person. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how prevalent that feeling is, but. What's your thoughts on that, uh, Greg? I mean, you say I can't see even the, the, the working cash. Uh, that levy is um, is a fixed amount anyway, isn't it? It is. It's a cap fund. I'm sorry. It's an uncapped fund. I'm, it's a cap fund. Yeah. So we are getting the max amount that we can get for it. The bond and interest is based on um, the um, um, our loans that we're take out in the bond sale. Right. Um, we still believe that the bond sale will bring us in at or just a hair below what our current bond and interest rate is right now. Right. So this is should not increase our our tax levy at all. And um, so. Um, well, my concern was that the rates are so low right now that it makes, it makes more sense to do it right now if we can. Okay. Any other comments? We need a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular Board of Education meeting. So moved. We have a motion. So we have a second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, we'll move back into our regular Board of Education meeting. Next item. Uh, we received four uh, construction management packages, one from Impact Strategies, one from SM Wilson, one from Petker, and one from Holland Construction. Uh, Mike and I sat down yesterday and went through all of them. Uh, felt like they all uh, deserved to have uh, a face-to-face -face, um, interview with them. So that was supposed to be next week. We've decided to move that back to April 8th because we're just not sure what's going to happen. They were all understanding. Um, it does allow us to still, or, or to be able to make the April meeting for a full um, board approval. So what we're going to do is kind of set up an informal uh, interview uh, with those groups. Mike and I will sit down and um, it went well and the, and the packages were, we think that any one of those would, would do a good job. Now we just have to see which one we feel like is going to be the best fit. <coughs> questions or comments? If we're still in this type of situation, will you do a video interview or, or, or first, um, you know, what, how That's you a tough call time? because I think right now we're so close in the, all the companies that now it's more of a uh, of our feel personally how we feel like we interact with the person that's going to be on site because we've asked each person each company to bring whoever's going to be on site sure and that way we can have conversations and get a better feel I don't know that we could I, I guess if we had to but uh, I, I would prefer doing it face to face so if we're still if we're under quarantine or something at that time we'll just, we'll just push that back we'll push it back okay. and we'll just kind of be behind the eight ball as far as uh, planning and Fits back and fits together. Okay. When you say close, uh, are you mean that there was not a significant difference between the bids? There, there are no bids. Oh, there's no bids. No just, bids. Just qualifications. So this is qualifications. We looked at their work. You know, have they done the kind of work that we're looking at? And this um, is based on a percentage of the project. Okay. There is. We don't talk money until we pick a company, and then we negotiate. Okay. That's how we. That's how it has to be done. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Next item. Uh, the e-learning, we talked about this the last couple months. It has now become pretty, a little more apparent uh, of the need for it. But uh, right now, uh, none of the elementary schools are interested. Um, I am interested in, in pursuing this, and I think the teachers at the school are interested, the high school. Um, so what we would like to do is, if, if nobody has any objections, is to move forward and get a plan together, get it approved, and be ready for this for uh, August. Now, the state has relaxed all of their e-learning requirements, so depending on how long this goes, we may implement an emergency e-learning plan and move forward with that with, with our kids. Uh, but as of right now, we're just sending lessons and, and kind of working uh, not quite officially in the e-learning basis. So, but this, as long as nobody has any objections, I, I would like to uh, move forward and, and work on a plan be ready for next year. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Have we talked to the grade school since this all started? I mean, they're kind of being enforced to do a e-learning type thing in the next few weeks. So have they changed their mind or? No, we haven't had a conversation okay. about this. I don't um, I don't the grade the um, Not like we are. Um, not all of their students take home Chromebooks. Part of that is because of the age. Um, typically, you don't have the, the smaller kids take things home. Uh, there's other ways around that, um, but we haven't had the conversation. So, you know, if we'd have had the conversation, right. you know, they closed all of our lunch spots, so it was, it's, it's hard to go and have a lunch now. But uh, we'll have those, and I don't know if that'll change their mind or not. Okay. But your, your uh, intent is to have our teachers make assignments and kids working at home uh, in the foreseeable future? Well, uh, so in, in preparation of this closure, we've asked the teachers to prepare three lessons each. And so they're prepared to start sending those out on Monday. We told them, because we're on spring break now, so we told them to wait till Monday. So depending on, if we go another week, and, and Jeff will be heavily involved in that, uh, we'll, we will probably try to implement a little more of a e-learning atmosphere as opposed to just sending out lessons. and, and sure. uh, Because the, the Information from the state is a little bit ambiguous. They don't want us, the grades should not hurt kids. 
they can improve the students' grades. Um, there, was, there was questions of whether or not we should be sending out new material. And so that's not what e-learning is. E-learning is basically new lessons that you send out, whether it's video or something else if your kids learn something new. Right now it's more of a try to keep kids engaged, a continuity of education is what we're saying, and that we just uh, uh, try to keep the kids going, um, practicing lessons and things like that. So it's, it's a little different than what we would do in a typical it seems like it'd be an open slate too to see what uh, what works, what doesn't work, and what uh, some growing pains and, and preparation for next year. We and we've already found a few kids that don't have Wi-Fi, and so we're going to have to look into solving that. Um, how we can help them out. Yeah. Okay. Any other <coughs> questions or comments? Let's move on to the next item. Uh, this is uh, each year we get the tax computation report from the county. Uh, that is in your folder. Copy of it. Um, so they send us this. It establishes what the rate setting EAV is. Our EAV uh, went up to two hundred eighty-nine million three hundred twenty-eight thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. It was two hundred seventy-eight million, so it went up uh, a little over eleven million dollars, um, up about four point oh seven percent. Basically, what the state asks us to do is to look through, make sure our numbers match what we asked for in our levy back in November and December. Uh, they do match. Uh, this represents uh, a, a very slight increase. It's less than a third of a cent increase. Um, we anticipated a 4%. Uh, that's what it came in at. My recommendation is that we go ahead and approve this and, and sign off and uh, move forward. I don't know if anybody had any questions on it. So uh, on the actual rate, uh, you're saying that, that there's an increase on the rate? Less, yeah, less than a third of a cent. Um, Mike, what's your opinion on that? There is no new Kokia Conference update, um, obviously, with all this, it's kind of halted. Um, so um, we are looking at, uh, our, our Coach Lars talking to a couple week two opponents for football for the 2021 season. We're going to have to take a bye next year uh, and take the, the, the forfeit win because of the teams that are available or in Chicago and up that direction, it, it's not feasible. So um, this happened a couple years ago when we had an issue with the uh, St. Louis team had to cancel. So, but the te both the teams that we're looking at, I don't really want to mention the teams because we haven't finalized contract. They're both well under an hour away. So I think they'll both be good quality teams. Um, they'll, they'll be competitive um, and it'll be a good uh, opponent to add to our schedule. Any questions or comments? Uh, new business. All right, this is the first reading um, of the student parent handbook. Um, there are um, quite a few changes. I asked Angie ahead of time if she would like to say anything about the changes. I know Mrs. Crunk typically goes through these. I did ask Ms. Crunk and Ms. Jung to stay home tonight. Uh, I didn't think we need, they didn't need to, to come up to the meeting. But Angie, if you have anything that's, that's really apparent, um, my recollection uh, is that there's a lot of conversation about Chromebooks that comes from the teachers on how to handle uh, issues with kids coming without Chromebooks or coming with uncharged Chromebooks. Um, and so there's a handful of changes that have to do with Chromebooks. Um, but and a, lot of, a lot of the other changes had to do with kind of how we're handling some of our scholarships and, and dual credit to kind of align with what our current practice is. Um, we took out a lot of the scholarship information because it, it changes so much from year to year that we're just going to keep that on the counselor's webpage. Uh, it's underneath our, our webpage. So. Um, yeah, I, so the meeting didn't really come up. So the group, the, 
<coughs> that we've had every year. The past few years I've been on it, and there have been some significant changes come out of that. Um, students mostly were pretty happy with what the handbook is, and they didn't have a whole lot of input this year, so there wasn't any significant changes, I don't think, that came from that meeting. Um, we did have a lot of discussion about unions and uh, kid, student IDs at those things, but nothing that ended up going into the handbook. Um, but yeah, I, pretty much all of the uh, changes are with uh, either Miss um, Miner and her, her team or with Chromebooks. So um, I don't see anything that concerns me. I don't know if anybody else had gone through it and, and looked, but most of it's uh, that sort of stuff. Any questions or comments? I was just cu uh, curious on the conversation on the phone uh, use. The phone usage? So um, <laughs> you get. Parents have gotten used to their kids having phones at school. They want their kids to have phones at school. So the parents there, the representative that we did have, do want the phones at school. Um, they want them to have them at lunch. They they like the, the students and said that phone use in the school has gotten a lot better. Kids come in and use the phone pockets and then when the teachers say it's fine, then they get, they get the phones. So um, they, they, everybody seemed to be good with having phones at school. Your, your so these are the pockets that we're yeah. talking about. So basically, the kids come in to get in school. They put their phones in the pot. Or I'm sorry, in class. each class, and put the phones in the pocket. And your, 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 the feedback you're getting from the teachers is that's working. That's not making them the uh, uh, the hard person to say hey, put your your things in. My my concern and the only question that I asked mm -hmm. uh, to Angie was one uh, uh, that um, phones. Ear pods, uh, watches, um, from a cheating standpoint, uh, was a concern, and it was simpler to just not allow them during the class time. But if this is addressing that in your your view, then uh, then that uh, certainly at, at lunchtime and everything, I, I thought that that would be fine. But they weren't to be out beside them. Uh, there are there are apps that some teachers use, and the kids will use their phone. If they do voting and different activities in class, so there are educational reasons that some of the teachers use the phone. Okay. So you like it? I think what we're doing now is 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 a good compromise. You know, we we gave the kids a Chromebook that basically does everything a phone does. So pulling the phones out just seemed a little bit um, okay. kind of you know. Well, I wanted to get your opinion. Input yeah. yeah. from the senior student who came in when we didn't have phone pockets and stuff said it was a transition just like anything else and that was kind of where our lanyard discussion went. The first year it's hard, the second year it gets easier. She said now it, it's routine. They, they, don't, they don't have an issue and the teacher representative also seemed to think the same thing. So Thank you for bringing that up. No problem. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we need a motion to approve the first reading of the changes for the 2020-2021 student parent handbook as presented. Motion to approve. Angie's motion. Second. Okay. We get a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Next item. Um, our Chromebook lease is up. This is the fourth year of the Chromebook, so it's, it's we're due to turn our Chromebooks over. Um, so, Mr. Alt, our Director of Technology, has done a wonderful job of going through and looking at different Chromebooks. Um, he's had students come in and ch test the Chromebooks out. Um, the Chromebook that we're looking at is an ASUS Chromebook, um, and uh, it's it's so much more stout than the ones we had the first generation that we had. So I do have a, a sample of it. The other thing that it has is it's got a case. I don't know if you can see the case. We want to get rid of a little holding case that we have because they really did, all they did was just help the kids carry it around. It wasn't protective. And then this case is kind of like an otter box case. So it goes on and it's supposed to protect from four foot up. Jeff told me not to drop it because he doesn't want me to. It's just a loner. But, uh, uh, this purchase goes through lease levy, so it's not necessarily a direct out-of-pocket expense. It'll be built into our lease levy. It'll take the place of what we're currently paying for our lease. Um, he was also able to negotiate a lower rate on our licensing fee uh, by going and getting that a little bit early. 
but um, what I'd like to do is to approve the purchase of these. This was the best price that we could get. Uh, we feel like with the price that we got for this, we won't have to raise our uh, fee, so we'll be able to keep our registration fee the same. So that was one thing they wanted to really kind of pay attention to as well. But it's it's a really stout and uh, Jeff's it, it's it has the ability to that we can actually still do a lot of the maintenance on it, which we do. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nipper and some kids have, have actually learned how to do some of the maintenance, and so it, it, it's a really nice piece of equipment and uh, should easily last um, for the next four years. So what we'd like to do is have that approved tonight. That gives us the time to make the order and then uh, get that in in time for us to do all the work that they have to do to get them ready for the kids. The bill won't be paid until July, so that's part of the agreement is that, that we can order them, they'll ship them, we'll deliver them, we won't have to make the payment and it'll fit into our lease levy. So it pretty, should be fairly seamless and, and, and not show uh, uh, much of an increase at all. Any questions or comments on that? <clears throat> now, the last contract we had, I remember, I guess, had we purchased those Chromebooks because they were available for the kids to buy or, or whatever at that the, time? The first one we had, the way the lease levy worked is we got to keep them. Okay. And so the next, this, this one we have now, we don't have that option. Okay. We had talked about it. Um, so that is, um, they will be sent back. They'll look at them, they'll uh, evaluate, and then we'll get any, anywhere from about 10 or 15 bucks a Chromebook back. Mm -hmm. And so could be five to 15,000, depending on what we get back. We haven't worked out the lease yet. So we'll now, once these are approved, now we'll go through and, and work out the lease. If the board is interested in making that available, that's something we can do with the lease company and, and make that an option. It probably will make it a little more expensive, the lease. But um, how many kids do we have buy Chromebooks? The, I, well, I wasn't here when that <coughs> happened the last time, but I would, from what I recall, um, it was around 50% went to kids and staff, and then there were chunks sold to some of the surrounding schools who at that time didn't have anything at all, and it was a good way to for some of those schools to take advantage of that and, and get in at a low cost. That was also a time where not many schools had the Chromebooks yet. Right. And that's that's a little bit different now. I guess uh, I was just thinking about it since Angie had said something about the grade school. You know, if they had a $30 option like they did four years ago. Right. <clears throat> if, if they needed a hundred dollars. Then our current uh, lease or be contacted and asked, hey, what, what's your, your cash out? For the, the lease we have now? Yeah. Ask them what the price is to keep them. I don't know. For I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I, I, all I can do is ask. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're just out of curiosity. Ask ten bucks to it and, uh, and rent them. Yeah. Well, anyway, Mr. Alton wants to just call and ask. I can look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need a motion to approve the purchase of the Chromebooks, cases, and license fee as proposed. So we have a motion. Second. A second. Angie, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next item. Um, we need to, uh, once they abate the tile, we'll need to replace the tile, and that'll all fall under that uh, health, life, safety, and that grant that we received. What I would like to do is put out a bid for that pile, which is about seven classrooms. But I'd also like to replace the carpet in the uh, cafeteria with the tile. Um, it, it, there is no abatement that needs to be done because we're leaving the tile that has the abatement, I'm sorry, the asbestos and the, the mastic. So what we would basically do is take that center section, put some kind of vinyl tile in and, and uh, replace it, the carpet. It's just. Uh, the carpet gets pretty gruesome after half a year. They did clean it again over spring break, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing we're looking at about another $25,000 worth of tile, I would guess, in that room. So uh, I would like to go ahead and wrap that all together in one bid. Uh, we don't really need, uh, you guys don't need to uh, approve it. I, I can put the bids out and then you guys would approve the bid when, when it comes back. So we'll put together a little package and, and uh, Send it out and, and see if who can give us a good price. Everybody okay with that? It's the only uh, item that I've been contacted by three different uh, sets of parents on is to the carpet. Pay, do something with the carpet. Oh yeah. Uh, so that's that's great that you're looking at this. I 
I've, I've been dragging my feet, but yeah, it's, it's uh -huh. time. It's about. Okay. Next item. Uh, annual business to approve membership in IHSA. Um, this allows us to participate in uh, the extracurricular um, activities for the playoffs and things like that. So need a motion and passage if you would. Okay. Any questions or comments? If not, we need a motion to approve LCHS's membership in the IHSA for the would it be for the 2020-2021 yes, school year. Would. And I know Gary likes to make that motion. I don't think he's here. Is Gary on there? I'll make the motion for Gary. <laughs> we, have second. we have a second for Angie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, do we have any board correspondence this evening? Uh, none. Any agenda items? Uh, none. Do we have a reason to go into closed session? We do. Uh, student discipline, uh, personnel, and discussion of real estate. Okay, I need a motion to go into closed session. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Aye. Ah. <laughs> Motion passes. We're now in closed session. Thank you for attending.